Hello and welcome. It is that of the 22nd day of March, 2021. My name is Derek and this is the Money Charts channel. All bets, trades, and amongst the like. Well, of course, that's your own risk and your own reward. And I'm going to be going over strategies. Very interesting. I will not be trading this cross nor this strategy that I'm going to be talking about. I have in the past and I do like it. It's just I don't need to and Quite frankly, it's just I don't want to. However, you're going to see the profitability within it. I'm not going to go over too many specifics until I quickly just go over the entire technical analysis as I see it. As it goes, we have on the daily term time frame with PIVX crossed against the BTC on the daily. An area of major resistance. I mean, what a move when you have these candle-like moves. And we're going to be talking about these, whatever you want to call it, these lines. where they, uh, Because it's going to be very, very important in this video. But that's where price action was at that day. Obviously, you can see, you don't know how long it spent there just by looking at the daily. It could have been 10 minutes. It could have been one trade. It could have been an hour, three hours. And when I say three hours, maybe three hours above, like, say, like, where it broke out from, which would have been, like, 1,500, like, 1,400 change up to fifteen. Because that was the resistance key point here. Like you can see like 1396. Of course, this doesn't count because I didn't know that point. But this established resistance area here. And even this was just um, levels that gave back. It does it a lot. And that's what I'm going to be going over again. But So you come back and retest that level February the 3rd and then retest this. And in this case, supporting decently to where you came from. And on uh, this level here, meaning a higher low to here. And then on the lows of February 16th, 17, a higher load of this. Nice little holding within the 18 average of highs for three or four days. And, a, and what a breakout. So, yeah, we've been holding this. And it's got to have a nice clear break about this established high with, again, that little microscopic line on uh, March the 20th. But it's really got to start to see a move above 2,500 to start to think, yeah, that's probably an okay chance. But more importantly, I want you want to see it hold above the 18 average of highs, around 22 and two-thirds for a good significant period of time. And uh, in that, yeah, maybe this thing is going to get going. Uh, but we look at this on the more longer term. Holy crap, this thing is getting its ass kicked on the monthly, but a lot of other coins are because it's a matter of Bitcoin just crushing, of course, against the US dollar. Again, you're seeing these moves in here. Within this, down, down, down in here. But price action stabilizing just... I mean, it did go good well, but just meh, okay. Meh, okay, because it spent not as much time with the 18 average of fives. It was only three periods, but it had a, a good move here. Coming up, though we're high to here, so be it. But now it's important after making a move above the 18 average of highs and now can have the availability to come to the band. Thus, now important to stay above the lows. Hasn't tested it yet. So if there's any little bit of downward action, that's what I'd be looking for as support. And most certainly the key level for where it needs to hold this move. The must hold area, as I said, which is where it came from. Like around 17-ish. But, yeah, that's the... Uh, that's the more uh, longer term, but... Let's, let's take a look at the shorter term, and we're going to go over that strategy a little bit, but four-hour term. Well, the bottom came before the 15th day in here. A lot of strength amongst the 18 average of highs endured within this run. A little bit of correctionary move within it, and then retracement from key high to two kilos. Kilo A, and there's even more below it, but kilo A and kilo B. From kilo A... This move was a higher low. And then when you see it rising from that higher low, that gave you some good momentum. You can even talk about it like a cup and handle if you just do all of this move in here as well. But then you have the high to the low from here and here on its way up. And within that time frame, you would have been, you're, this is the four hour. So you're looking at just this little bit in here and you were seeing, okay, we had this high at like 21 low change. It just came down to almost below, to basically 19. And, and now we have this hour going on at 8 a.m. or 9 a.m., whatever. You want to take a look at the hourly 15 minute, all those early shorter term time frames, and then see evidence that it's going to be 
going to hold and stay above like a 61.8% fib from this high to this low. And then when you see it showing good momentum, you can see the evidence for something like this going to happen. And since that's happened, nice little big move and it's corrected well within the 18. And now it's showing some optimistic signs within this particular time frame that it just might want to get above the 18 average of highs. And in doing such, giving the possibility for a fantastic move. And this is an interesting time because it's 1.14 in the morning. I don't know why, but there's some, there's some interesting moves that happen. And we'll see this on the hourly, which is what we're on now. That there's some interesting moves at like 1400 hours and 12 p.m. and 1600 p.m. or 4 p.m. Eastern time, but man, these one, two, three o'clock hour plays on PivX recently has been interesting as well. And right now, 114 a.m. Is it starting something? You understand the time frames and the day trade, you get ready at this time, and now I'm seeing it. Now, if I can maybe see this get up to maybe here, I might sell a little bit. And if this doesn't go up to a nice move like 26, 27, 2800 Satoshi, and it very easily can. I mean, I don't think it's favored to do so, but greater than 50%, but I mean, it's starting a possibility of a move here. So we look back here, look at this move in here, pretty decent, but it's going to get nicer though. 1900 up to like 2400. That's like 20 plus something percent from lowest to highest level. Topping at three in the morning. Before that, we got some interesting moves here. You can trade this along the way, put your orders in, those sort of deals, wait for the moves. But, I mean, what's the deal here? 2,100 hours topping at 4 a.m. Okay. Price action. Give you two opportunities to get profits. For if you were in here, you had your opportunity to sell the market as the price action was so stable beforehand. At around uh, 2,400 change, 2,500. But then to make this high at around 33 was a gain of like seven, eight, seven or so hundred, which is like 20, 30, 30 plus percent. It comes back to a nice higher low. You might have got it. You probably should have got maybe something if you were there, meaning if you happen to sell like 32, I mean, maybe you didn't. Maybe you're looking to come back to like 23 and you missed. That's going to happen, but sometimes you don't miss. And if you didn't miss, you got your buy, then you can sell again. And who knows within these four periods, there's a lot of volatility of up and down choppy moves. I'm not going to short note to see what the five or 15 look like, but a lot of good moves that be could come available. And even if you just wake up and you find out your order is hit and then you're somewhere down in here for price, you're like, sweet, okay, got to get your nice little buyback. And then that's just as it goes. And then you have it here again. This move happens at 3 o'clock in the morning. It is what it is. Nice little grinding on the 18 average of highs beforehand. So it's a two-move play. You have this move that went up here, come back down within... Uh, uh, well, we this there's this move within the first one, but this move here back. That's move one, and then the grinding within the 18 retracement from the highs of around 3,079 ish to about 2,200 or 2,100 high change, and then then you can see this is where it's holding and staying above the 18 for like a few hours, starting at the zero stamp. Yeah, big time. That's that time it does that. So it holds and stays it for three hours. So that when I use the verbiage, holding and staying above it, if you want to see what it looks like, well, those are three hours there where it showed it. It also coincided with it showing strength amongst the 18 average of highs. Uh, here we have this little move. Now, this is what happens in the little after afternoon. High was 1670, 1300 low. So just an okay move. Nice little grind your way move in here. If you're able to get this buy order in here, then congratulations. I don't know how long this would have been. I'm not going to short it out again. And if you happen to be there, 1,800 hours at 6 p.m. For me, I'd be eating dinner at that time. Uh, I mean, this is where you get your buybacks very quickly in here. And this is what you want to do if you want to test it out. You can, there's two ways. Well, there's multiple ways. I'm going to show you two ways, though. Just go back in time. And I've done videos in the past of going back in time and doing it. So what you could do is you could take a site like this and do what I'm doing. Just scroll it and just bring it back like this. And, and you can see how these moves are kick ass. And now, I mean, look at these moves. Just have your orders in ready to go. And then play the pretend market. Because if you can practice doing a hobby, I mean, just beautiful moves here. This is just crazy. 3,500 up to, holy shit, 7,000. I mean... Yeah, that's just how it goes. I mean, yada, yada. But what you do is you can go back in time and just pretend like, okay, this is where it would start. So here we are. Let's just assume you started back in the start of 2020. So you're on this on here. You're say this is what the price. You're at 3,000 Satoshi. 
and then maybe you just get yourself a bunch of lines. So, I, okay, I'm going to buy a 3,000, but if it goes lower, I'm going to put a spy order in, say, at like 2,820. And then, and then you put another line in. Maybe I'm going to put a line in it, say, in... Oh, why did I do that? I didn't mean to... Oh. Don't know what I pushed to get it back to... I guess it doesn't matter where I start off. I'm just going to explain what I'm doing. So you start here as an example. So you have your first, you have a seller here, just in case you make your buy. Okay, I got more Bitcoin ready. I'm going to put a buy order in, say, here. And then I'm going to put another buy order in, say, here. And I'm just going to put my last, a base currency. You're just going to see Ethereum market, it's a Tether market, whichever one you choose. But... I got to, but you got to want to make sure you look at history that you're looking at, like maybe the Ethereum market might be much more profitable or whichever other one, maybe a Binance coin market, yada, yada, different choices. And then you put like other sell orders in. So you put one, say here, and then you got to think, okay, mathematically, how are you going to allocate how much you're going to sell it each time? Let me put another sell order here, say here, and you can put like maybe 80 sell orders in if you want to just to put a lot of work in or have an automatic, if you have some sort of automated script work, do so much work for you, do a whole bunch of amazing computer programming. And maybe this site will let you put sellers even up to here because I just want to have, if you want to have the whole coins on the exchange. And then of course, if you don't, you just wait for coins to move. You wait till they go to the suggested tar or selected targets. And then from your hardware wallet, you deposit the coins, sell, and then you just buy. And then you withdraw, you just withdraw those coins back to your hardware wallet. When you don't trust exchanges, which quite frankly, I don't blame you. And I might be, and I probably might be also on that camp. But with that being say, stated, another way of saying it is I'd rather hold it myself than have someone else. It's almost like if I go casino, and I'm playing poker, I'm playing this, whatever, and I'm leaving the casino. And they're like, okay, sir, would you like to leave, bring your money home with you or would you like to keep it here? And in the reality, sometimes I would want to keep it there, especially I'm going to, knowing if I know it's more secure, as an example, because I'm just going to be there the next day as one example point. But, uh, but more times than not, no, 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 I'll just bring it home with me. Thank you very much. And that's just the way it is. I'm like, so I go to the, I go to the exchange. It's like going to like the pawn shop, going to the, 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 the date, the, uh, cause wherever for like 20 minutes and you're going, coming and leaving. So you can see here, you would have had like your buy orders hit. Okay. Buy order hit, put a seller up here or whatever, all that type of thing. And, and there you can see whatever, how you would have played, how you could have your sell orders that would just be hitting in here. Maybe you'd have three of them hit, and you're like, okay, well, I can. In a situation like this, what would your strategy be? If, say, you seen you have three orders hit, and this is to assume just for whatever person's like this, whatever, as if it matters. What my strategy is, well, I definitely want that 3170 sell I can buy back right now for sure. I can even buy back all three of the 29 as well. But maybe I can buy back the 31. I'm going to get a good deal on my buyback. I could maybe buy my 2900 maybe down here at say 1800 or even even a little bit lower than that maybe because I think if it's going to be a bear market if you're playing bear market strategy I might play this around here near near previous low but above previous low and this one maybe even below previous low of course in reality I have new sell orders like above and here maybe I adjust the sell orders maybe that one would be the next highest one and so on and so forth and then you, you just go in time. You can see how many days you'd be doing no trades if this was a volatility you'd be going for. But there's one of your buybacks. Okay, I get a buyback, put a sell in here. Uh, and then there's another one. I can put another sell order up here. Uh, there's another one. I can put another sell order up here. And then maybe you had a buy in here at 800 or whatever. I'm going to put a sell in. Uh, I'm going to put a sell order in here. Why is it not drawing the line? There it is. And then, there, oh, there you go. So now this would have been sweet. You would have had a spot where, let's just assume you're on this day. I mean, you don't know what the next day is going to bring you. But this is just awesome. You had to sell it around 1400 and 1130. And then you happen to be coming home from wherever you were or whatever and I have you and you see it's 1100 right now. And now you can buy back the 1400 immediately. And I can maybe put a little buy order. Maybe I'm doing near previous low. 
and then I can put I can just put another cellar in like that that there and you can see in here this is the spot where you would miss it again let's just assume you're doing small numbers you had 30 40 50 orders in uh, you're doing a different way I mean you have a, you have maybe like 30 of them hit and then after 30 of them hit maybe you buy back 14 of those orders like the, the, the last 14 or last 12 or whatever and then you have put for the remainder you put buy orders below and then within this day here you might have seven sell orders or eight or nine sell orders hit and you're going to get your buybacks again after that but what you would do is place how much you would sell like so you start off i'm going to start off by a thousand or ten thousand of whatever coin uh, how many would you, would you sell at the first level if you own ten thousand or you own a thousand or whatnot if you owned a thousand would you sell a hundred fifty would you sell two hundred and then if you're playing for five percent moves ten percent moves twenty percent moves you can also download data crypto compare is where i like to download data that's the website that i use and then you can get like spreadsheet files and then when you get that data you can then do uh, computer programming work or you can just use a spreadsheet to view each number and then you can do it in different ways but it gives you a mathematical level and you can see how your profits work how you would do and then you're seeing your mistakes oh my goodness i can see i sold too much here i sold too less here i should have sold more i should have sold less I should have waited for a better move. Or yes, I should have sold at this point, and I didn't should have, shouldn't have waited as long. Different of things, different things. Right? Yeah, maybe I should have had multiple different orders, or I should sell less here, more there. Or if I do this variant versus this variant versus this variant, how, which is going to create more profits, so on and so forth. And the more of that types of those exercises that you do, and that's like school. But the more of those things that you do the better off that you're going to be. It's like a project assignment there. And then when you see you're doing this on the play game, like as I mentioned like this, you spend maybe several hours and days doing it. Well, I'm not going to say become a master, but you might and you become experienced uh, or a prof a, a pro. Another way of saying master. I know it might not be the best of terms in 2020, but I don't know about these days, but you're, you become amazing at it. And thus you can dominate the game within the experience. And a lot of times historically you had to lose a lot of cash to gain experience. But when you can find ways of gaining it for the cost of little to nothing, and this game you can. So many ways. And this is where nothing comes into play because you can do it this way. And with cost of little, there's so many exchanges and minimum bets, depending on how big your bankroll is, where you can bet so small on these exchanges and do whatever types of day tradings you may desire want to learn and you can do it with like limited cost maybe you have a friend or child or someone you know and they're like okay and when i say child i know you have to be legal age to do this so we'll say a child's 18 19 of legal age if you know what i'm getting at in that go ahead play learn how to get good at it because you're young and if you kick ass, you kick ass. And then when you get good at it, there's two ways your portfolio can grow higher. One, because you're kicking ass with a low bankroll. And you just, you're going to be wishing you started with more, but happy that you did amazing. Or you get better and you're like, okay, maybe I can make some bigger deposits. And now that I know what I'm doing, I can I can confidently make the same plays. But instead of betting a $10 trade or a $20 trade, I can make two or $500 or $1,000 trades now. Or, and, and, or you just move them gradually want to move up, especially if you're doing paycheck by paycheck at different times where you're investing cash into your equity to play the game. But of course, these games are always going to come with the risk rewards, but it's good to know when you're doing this what the risks are in advance and what the rewards are. The probability the risk will happen. The probability the reward will happen. How each of them will affect you in, within your life on the financial level because let's assume you're worth like say 1.2 million dollars and you want to play for 60 bucks well of course i don't know what you're doing in that sense but winning or losing ain't going to financially do anything so that's again you want to realize okay if i put this in if you put like another way of putting it if you put little bits in here and there then that's one way of saying man i want to play this game of cryptos in whatever form but i don't want to i don't want to do any type of selling unless there's some real kick-ass amazing gains well, that can give you good reason to, if you think, oh, I can only put in so much, or I want to put in some, so like little, if that is. But that gives you good reason to use that strategy and then only put in a little amount, like 3%, 5% of your online bankroll. Or it's only like 100 bucks here, or a couple hundred bucks there, or even 20, 50 bucks here and there. 
or whatever is very low for your numbers. Uh, then you can know your plan. Oh, I only put 1500 bucks and now it's worth a thousand or 1500, but uh, what's the whole point of withdrawing five, 600? And I, I mean, yeah, I can even get this or that, but, um, that that's the reason on that. But the contrary to that is let's just assume you put like 50, 60, 80% of your net worth into it and you get those kick-ass gains. Well, now you got to you have a big job in protecting your portfolio because you just made a lot and learn how to protect that damn amazing, amazing play you just did. When I say amazing, it's interesting, I'm going to say at the least. Is, uh, but you know what? It's a very, very crazy market that we've been in. A lot of people, of course, have been uh, just crushing the numbers. People have been getting crushed as well in different ways. And there's a lot of people that were crushed in the past, like when Bitcoin was down to 6,000, 3,000. And even when it went to 14, back down to 6,000 and 5,000 again. People were giving up on the Bitcoin and all these other, especially some of these altcoins that were just getting destroyed against the dollar and stuff like that. Uh, they got out with like losses and they just got their asses destroyed. And they're looking at this now and thinking, holy shit, why did I do that? But you know what? The game is as the game is. Price, it's only price that pays. Price action does not give a shit if you win or you lose. It's only going to execute the actions as need be. So if you were to go on PivX way back on whatever date I'm going to, which is uh, February the uh, uh, 11th, and the only the price they were going to pay you at this time would have been around 1,330 13, Satoshi against the Bitcoin. But if you would have waited a few days, now it would have been 1626. If you would have bought and sold, yep, you could have got like 20%. They don't, they don't care that you made like that. Or if your net worth went from like uh, 20,000 on it to like 26,000, they don't care. And same thing on the way down. It's, it, it, it's market is just a market. Thank you for tuning in. Have yourself a great day. Bye bye.